Hey, writer, if you're ready to level up, then buckle up. Get your pen and paper ready. It's time for another episode of the Art and Business of Writing podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the Art and Business of Writing podcast. My name is Chris Jones. I'm your host. And today my guest is Lillian Rachel, a native Brit. After nine transatlantic moves, Lillian now makes her home in Washington, D.C. She discovered the joys of audiobooks while homeschooling her two children and has developed her passion for learning into well-rounded audio narration. Connecting with each character in a project, she brings her heart along with a mix of proper British class or East Coast attitude to every project. Guys, welcome Lillian Rachel. You're going to enjoy her today as we discuss audiobook narration and what it takes to create your audiobook. So without further ado, Lillian Rachel. Hey Lillian, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's great to have you on. So tell us how you got started in voiceover work. Oh, I was at that crossover stage in my life where I, my kids had grown. They were in high school and college, and I was wondering, you know, now it's time for me to do something I really want to do, <laughs> something that's really good. I'm going to enjoy. What do I want to do? So I thought about it, prayed about it. And then my daughter, who had had a book published, an anthology published, that was going to audio and so she sent me the link to say, hey, mom, this is going to audio. You, you could do this. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because now, you know, most audio books are actually recorded in home studios. The big publishers have or had before the pandemic their own studios, but most independent books were recorded in home studios. And I had no idea. So that was really excited. I started researching. I certainly wasn't ready to record that book, but that started me on the path. I started researching audiobook recording, equipment, training, everything. And I went to my husband and said, I think I know what I want to do next. I think I want to be an audiobook narrator. And he just looked at me and said, yeah, you should. So, <laughs> so that we had, neither of us had any idea what we were getting into, but... Certainly, I'm glad we did. So did you eventually figure out what you were getting into? <laughs> I did, yes. Yes, it was a very steep learning curve that first year particularly. I didn't, I launched as a business, but I didn't market myself or put myself out there to record for about a year. It was in training and getting coaching and learning all of the software and getting set up with my recording booth at home, all that kind of stuff. So it was almost a year, I think, before I actually started work. Yeah. So once you started recording, did people like tell you you had a great voice? It's like, I'm sitting here listening. I'm like, man, I should just ask you questions all day. I love the sound of your voice. <laughs> Thank you. Well, yes, I have always had that since I moved to the States, because obviously in England, it's nothing special. Everyone sounds great. You know, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just because I have something different, I think. But having said that, anybody can be an audiobook narrator if they have the training. It's not so much about the voice, but what you do with it. Does that make sense? It does. It's like uh, everybody has the potential to be a good writer. Like they might be able to write short stories, but can they write a novel or nonfiction or fiction? It just depends where you want to go with the skills you start with. Well, talk about that a little bit, because I think that's really interesting, the training that goes into becoming a narrator, because it's like, you know, when people try to write for the first time, they realize, oh, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to mm. be, you know? And so is it the same for a narrator? Is it like, wow, okay, I can narrate, I can talk all day long, and then you actually have to learn the skill set, and then it becomes a different animal, I'm sure, right? Definitely. Yes, that's, that's really true. I've always enjoyed reading books out loud, and I definitely tried to read bedtime stories to my kids long after they were interested in me reading bedtime stories to them because I just love storytelling. But I never had the skill set to be a writer, so I really enjoy other people's writing. And I've always enjoyed reading books out loud. But having said that, you're right, actually being an audiobook narrator brings a whole new level to it. There's actually a video I recommend when people ask me this, and it's a video put out by one of my coaches, Sean Pratt, and it's called So You Want to Be an Audiobook Narrator. It's on YouTube. You can Google it. 
and it's only about five minutes long, but he'll explain, okay, like, so first of all, what you need to do is shut yourself in a really small closet, dark with just maybe one little light, put the book on the stand in front of you and read for six hours and see how you feel. <laughs> and then do that for a couple of weeks and then see if you still want to be an audiobook narrator. So yes, we spend hours at a time in a little closet by ourselves, talking to ourselves in a little padded room. And that's what we do. <laughs> With frequent breaks, of course, sanity breaks. But yes, it is something that you have to be passionate about. I think like any art, it's in the creative arts. You're an actor. You've got to love it. And I think like being a musician or even a sports person, continuing ongoing coaching really does help to hone the skills. Now, with regard to your voice, because I mean, it becomes your instrument. Are there things you have to do to take care of that? Because you're narrating so much, you're talking so much. Are there like any mm, things that you it, do to, to make sure that your voice you know, stays fresh and crisp and healthy? Hydration is key. Number one, <laughs> drink lots and lots and lots of water and then drink more water. Take breaks. I do now. I didn't at the beginning of my career, but I do now try and take weekends off. And I'm quite quiet, a lot more quiet at the weekends than I am during the week. So take breaks, drink lots of water. There's, I drink tea. There's a wonderful tea called throat coat tea, which is very soothing to the throat. Obviously, what you're drinking doesn't actually touch your vocal cords, but it does help to soothe the top of your mouth and keep you hydrated. Anything you drink will help keep you hydrated, which is key for sure. And not straining your voice, knowing when to take breaks. Now, you mentioned that your daughter kind of got you the start, got you into audiobooks. You know, and after you like learned and got coached up, when did you dive into it like both feet in? It's probably about three years ago, I'm guessing now. Yeah. Three years ago, and I have not regretted it at all. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing more and more. I've definitely learned a lot along the way. Each year, I look back and I'm like, wow, this time last year, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Especially now, I think with the pandemic, I've listened to a lot more audiobooks now, a lot more podcasts. So they, it's probably been great for you, I'm sure. Actually, 2020 was my best year. Yes. So even though people said that audiobooks aren't going to grow this year because nobody's commuting, but to be honest, I think people are listening to more audiobooks because, you know, you listen to audiobooks when you're walking your dog, when you're crafting or baking or working out. So, yeah, I think that they're going to continue to grow. The Audiobook Publishers Association, their last report came out summer 2020 so it was didn't include the 2020 figures but it um, noted eight straight years of double digit growth in the audiobook industry i think that's a pretty good trend i don't think it's going to go away oh that's phenomenal uh, i think i don't think it's going to go away either i think with audio and same with video i think people just look yeah. for alternative ways to be entertained and i yeah. think those ways are it yeah with audiobooks and podcasts and audio dramas i love it all yeah so do you narrate fiction, nonfiction, or? I do both. I mostly get hired so far for fiction. I've done some nonfiction too. I think like authors, you can get into a niche and really excel in one niche. And some narrators do just stick to one niche. Other narrators like me will narrate anything. Yeah. Yeah. Several years ago, I listened to like Jim Dale do the Harry Potter series and it was oh, phenomenal. Yes. He's so, so good. good. Yeah. So good. He's so good. Do, do people ever ask you to get into character also? In the audiobooks? Yeah, in the audiobooks. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. There are a couple of schools of thought on characterizations in fiction in the audio work. Some people just give a little nod to each character, just enough to differentiate when you're listening. Others go all out and give it a completely different type of voice. And it really depends on the narrator and the book. So I really enjoy characterization. I cast each character in my mind as if I was casting a movie. And I just really enjoy it. So what's a character that you did that was like really fun for you? You know, it's funny because I love doing the bad characters, most of all. <laughs> I did one book that was set in ancient Rome and there was this really nasty senator who was trying to, you know, take down the Caesar. He was fun to narrate. And 
the Lady de Berg type characters who just, uh, they're just so full of themselves. And I think that's kind of fun because it's really opposite to how I am normally. <laughs> so it's kind of fun to just get into a completely different character. Oh, absolutely. Like being, yeah, like kind of having an alter ego almost. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> so why should authors make audiobook versions of their books? Oh, I think every author should. Apart from it being a billion dollar industry, as we said, and a growing industry, I think it gives you another revenue stream for work that you've already done. I think that it opens up your work to be more accessible to not only people who enjoy reading, they listen to audiobooks, people who don't enjoy reading listen to audiobooks. Perhaps somebody has diminished sight or they're dyslexic. And it opens up reading to them too. So I love that about audiobooks. I love that it makes, I just love that it makes books more accessible. Yeah, I think that's the main thing that I love about the audiobooks and why I think they should be there. It used to be only top tier authors that got their books in audio that went and published their books with the big top five publishers. But now it's opened up to all indie publishers and you can have audiobooks of the same quality as the top five big publishers put out as well. So it has that kind of cachet to it as well when you really get a good narrator and good quality audio and you get a new following. So I, I like that idea, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I love that audiobooks allow you to use your own imagination. So what I see in my mind's eye is completely different than what you see. Yes, yeah. And that's interesting actually as well because what you hear in your mind when you're writing your book and what people hear in their mind when they're reading a print version of your book and then what they hear in their mind when they're reading or listening to an audio version of your book, they all ha can bring out different aspects of your writing, which is kind of interesting to think about. Yeah. So with authors who want to create audio books, how should they write their books with audio in mind? Oh, well, if you are doing that, I highly recommend that you do write with audio in mind, first of all, and that you read your book out loud. I think when we read out loud, the physicality of reading out loud, I think you notice things that you don't when you're just reading it in your mind. Certainly, you can notice the tempo, the characterization, the prosody of your writing, of your characters. And when you're reading every single word, I mean, your editor really is going to thank you because you'll be a better writer. You're going to notice grammatical errors that you might have skipped over because you read what you assume is there rather than what is actually there. You can notice words which are repetitious that you use maybe several times in a chapter that you might want to swap out. Or So there's words or phrases that a lot of authors fall back on and you don't notice it until you're reading it out loud. Or perhaps you changed a character's name halfway through the book and you maybe missed one or two instances where you didn't update the name because that happened in a book that I read. When you're reading it out loud to yourself, you're just going to see your book and understand your book in a different way than when you were writing it or when you're reading it in your head. I think that's the first thing I would definitely recommend. And just the physicality of reading it out loud, what does the word sound like when you actually say it? Words like, I mean, every narrator will tell you words like grasped, clasped, and uh, gasped. You know, the, those three words are the bane of every narrator because by themselves, they don't sound too bad, but you put them in a sentence and they're so easy to stumble over and actually articulate and not sound over-articulated in the sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I've heard that authors should hire narrators, and then I've also heard that authors should narrate their own books. When I'm listening to an audiobook, I prefer listening to a book read by like a professional talent. I think it's just a different dimension because I've read, listened to books by authors, and sometimes they'll stop in the middle of a book and like editorialize a little bit, then get back into the reading. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, oh no, no, read your book all the way. But I, I really prefer books read by talent. What do you think? Well. As a talent, I definitely recommend a professional <laughs> narrator. But there are instances that it can work if the writer has acting experience or public speaking experience. It can work, for example. And I recommend acting experience, whether it's a fiction or nonfiction. 
But um, there are a few books that I have listened to that are author read that actually work. Having said that, the vast majority of the time, I think it is a different skill set. And I think you want someone with the skill set of bringing your book to life in audio to do it the justice that you want. If you're going to do it yourself, if an author is going to do it yourself, then you need to make sure that you've got the appropriate space to do it with the proper equipment. You need a you know, proper mic and audio interface, your headphones and your digital audio workstation. And you've got to know how to use that software and do it justice, or you've got to pay someone to hire a studio and an audio engineer while you read your book. Either way, that's going to take you time and money. So do you want to spend your time and money learning to do that yourself? Or do you want to continue writing and spend money and have someone do it who's already trained and has focused on doing that to the best of their ability? to bring it to a professional level. So I really think a professional narrator is the way to go <laughs> in most cases. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I guess that I tend to agree because I think that if I try to read my own work that I would stumble over things or I would think while I'm reading, like, oh, why did I say that? You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'd read your book, out loud before you had it published, <laughs> right. it might help. <laughs> Absolutely. But I know that, you know, a voice talent would know, you know how to pace the book properly. They would Definitely. know how to they would know how to articulate things correctly. They would know how to, you know, do the intonations. They like they would they would do everything by the book in a way that because they're you're trained to engage the listener automatically. Whereas yes. I'm not as an author, I'm not trained to engage the listener with words. I'm trained to engage the listener with physical words, not audible words. Right. Yeah, it's a definite. It's definitely a different skill set. Yeah, yeah. Stumbling over my words, and I speak for a living. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what's your process for making audio books? Like, walk me through as an an audio uh, talent how you make a book, from you know print to audio. Okay, so once I get the manuscript, a finished manuscript from the author, I'll read it through just to get an idea of you know the whole arc of the story get an idea of the author's intent of the book and the author's prosody and cadence of the, because everybody writes in their own style. And so you've really got to get the style of the author there because my job is to bring to life the author's intent. And so I need to kind of get in the author's head, in the narrator's head and in the character's head to really do that book justice. So I'll read it through. I'll make notes of any characterizations, any accents or dialects that might be needed in the book, any pivotal points I want to make sure that I know are coming up before I get to that point in the book so I can definitely do the arc justice. And for if it's a mystery, a murder mystery, I need I need to read it through because I shouldn't be the last one to know who's done it, <laughs> you know. So definitely read it through, make lots of notes. And I it's definitely a collaborative process with the author still at this point. If there's anything that the author wants to make sure that I hit, or if there are any characterizations or accents that the author wants to make sure that I know about, I you know, I work with the author just to get an overall view of the book. Once I've done that, I'll record the first 15 or so minutes. Usually I, it's from the first chapter, but if there are any key characters that come in later on in the book, I'll include that in the first 15 minutes. And then that gets sent to the author for their approval. And this is the chance for the author to give all of their feedback. Okay, it's very collaborative. I want to make sure that this is bringing to life the author's intent. Once that's approved, then I'll go ahead and record the whole book. After recording the whole book, it goes off to my editor and proofer. So it, it gets audio proof to make sure what I said actually matches what you wrote, because sometimes I get in the moment and I might transpose words, anything like that. It gets edited, so it gets taken any big gaspy breaths that I might have made, or um, if there are any extraneous noises or um, any mistakes that I made. They all get taken out. Any mistakes get sent back to me and I'll re-record those and they get plugged in seamlessly. So that all takes obviously quite a bit of time, as you would imagine. But once that's all done and it's been 
proofed and edited and mastered to make sure it sounds just tip top, then um, it gets sent to the author for authorization before it gets uploaded onto whichever platform we've chosen to work through. That's quite a process there. It is quite a process. For every finished hour of a book you listen to, it takes maybe between six and eight hours of work. So, yeah. It's, Are you serious? Mm, yeah, it, especially that pre-read. It takes longer than just reading it as you would read it, you know, just for fun. And pre-read and then the recording, it can take two hours to get an hour onto recorded I was gonna say onto tape but that wouldn't be correct but you know what I'm saying (laughs) to get recorded and then it goes to the editor and obviously he has to to go through I've got a wonderful editor and proofer in England he goes through everything he sends it back I'll do all the pickups for any mistakes I've made plug those in so they're all seamlessly done listen through it again for final QC make sure that everything flows Um, make sure I've got all the characterizations just so, and then it gets sent to you. So yes, definitely six to eight, sometimes 10 hours. If somebody's just starting with the audio process, it can take, yeah. When I first started, it probably took me 10 hours. (laughs) So if you have a 10 hour book, it's going to take 60 hours of work, more than 60 hours of work to get that to you in its finished state, ready for publishing. Yeah. Man, so tell me about the outtakes, you know, you talked about before, like making mistakes and having to mm. re-record. What happens in the process of, I know you talked about a little bit about what happens in the process of that, but like, when you get it back, what do you have to do specifically? Okay, so I master myself, or if I send it off to a publisher, then the publisher does all the mastering. So it depends if I'm working with a publisher, or if I'm working directly with an independent author. But if I'm doing it all myself, my editor will send it back and they'll mark the chapter and the time and what I said wrong and what I should have said on a sheet for me. So I'll open up that file, listen to that phrase or sentence just so I can get the tone of where the mistake was. And then I'll re-record that. It could just be a few words. It could be a whole sentence that I need to re-record. And then I need to master it so that it sounds, has the same sound quality as the original file and then it's kind of a cut and paste job i'll cut and paste it into the original file and listen again to make sure it all flows seamlessly and you can't tell that whether there are any changes at all (laughs) now do you have any funny stories around like having to re-edit anything i'm sure there are i've done so many I've said some crazy things, but I can't think of anything now. (laughs) You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start saving my outtakes now, and then I'll give you an update. Oh, you totally (laughs) should. That'd be amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Now, on the flip side, if one of our listeners says, hey, man, this is really interesting. I'd love to start a career in audiobook narration. What should they do? First of all, I recommend So You Want to Be an Audiobook Narrator video, that five-minute video that I mentioned earlier. There's also Karen Cummins. It's a wonderful audio book narrator, and she's got a website that I always send people to called The Narrator's Roadmap. And she has there everything that you need to find all these wonderful resources. So much there. Read through those. Start working with a coach so that you get some ideas of where you're at, where your skills lie, and where you need to improve. Okay. And then for our authors who may want to look for a narrator, where do they find narrators? Well, there's lots of sites. If you're an independent author, a lot of people choose acx.com, which is Amazon run. Amazon started that in 2011 because, of course, they saw where the audiobook trends were going. So acx.com has anybody can join ACX. So there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of narrators on there. Another, There's a few other sites that you can go to to look for narrators. Find Away Voices is one. A lot of these are independent sites. Audiobooks Unleashed or Pink Flamingo Productions, Spoken Realms, and Ahab.com. Ahab.com is actually from Penguin Random House, and they have more select narrators there probably, whereas... 
those same select narrators will probably be on all the other sites, but there'll be other narrators there too. So all kinds of skill levels, put it that way. Okay. And then lastly, if someone says, hey, I just want to hire you, Lillian, how do they reach you? <laughs> you can go to my website, lillianrachel.com. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for spending time with us and talking to us about audiobook narration today. Thank you so much. It's been fun. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, good luck on your continued trajectory of creating great audiobooks. Thank you. It is a joy. How's that for inspiring? I hope you take action on one thing you learned in today's episode. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast and left a review on iTunes, I want to encourage you to do that too. Finally, be sure to visit chrisjonesinc.com to sign up for updates. Don't worry, I won't spam you. And we'll see you back here next week for another episode.